Hi guys, welcome to another episode of LR Live. In today's episode, we are going to be fitting a new windscreen and windscreen rubber to our Project 110. So changing really a windscreen rubber more than a windscreen itself is a job that's neglected quite a lot on Defenders. Um, for some reason, the screens are pretty hardy and don't crack, so you don't often have to have the windscreen replaced. And if you do, a lot of the people doing the job um, professionally won't fit anything but a genuine rubber. So I wanted just to sort of mention today about a few options we've got. So we're actually going to be fitting a heated windscreen to our Defender, um, and we've got the option to either use a genuine or a aftermarket um, rubber. Now there's a huge difference in price, and while initially that's a bit of a scary thought, it's worth putting all the factors into place. So for instance, I need to tell you this straight away, um, this is a non-genuine windscreen rubber. It's perfectly capable of doing the job, um, but it's only 10 pounds plus the tax. So for 10 quid, it's a brand new windscreen rubber. Now there's nothing that uh, goes in between this rubber in quality and price until you get to a genuine one, which is £130, which I know is a massive difference in price. So what can you really take on board when you're deciding on what rubber to fit? So we had a little chat about it. So I'm doing this job uh, with a friend of mine who's got a bit more experience on doing windscreens than me. So he's gonna be guiding me through the process. I have done a couple of these, um, but not for a while. So it would be good to get some professional tips as well. So at the end of the day, if you're fitting a standard windscreen, they're not that expensive. You're probably looking about 40 quid for a windscreen. And the only risk you've got, essentially, with one of these cheaper rubbers is it's, it's harder to work with. And you don't want to have that risk of breaking the windscreen because that's really the only risk involved in this process is whether or not you can get the new windscreen in without it cracking. Uh, and I've seen it a few times. And obviously, when you're using an aftermarket rubber, it's not as malleable. And by that, I mean, it's not as flexible as a genuine one. And I'll show you the differences in just a second, but you have to work it a lot harder. And you know, you need a bit more experience, perhaps a bit more patience. It will show you the process and you can decide whether or not it's something you want to take on board. And who knows, we might even crack our own windscreen. Let's hope not, that, uh, that's not the plan. But um, yeah, we'll get stuck into it. On the right, we've got the genuine rubber here. And on the left, we've got the aftermarket and you can immediately see the difference really in the thickness and the width of it itself. In the corners of it, where it spreads, and you'll understand this later when I show you, but when you actually sort of stretch the rubber over a corner, you need as much depth there as possible, otherwise it doesn't fit properly, because this gets pulled in to the aperture itself, and then this bit here is the bit that spreads out and goes on to the actual windscreen itself, you can see there. And on this genuine one, it's a lot bigger, so you've got a much more coverage on the outside of the windscreen and this will all become clear when i show you later but other than that i mean the quality of this rubber is actually really nice it doesn't feel particularly um harder than the genuine one if you wanted to make this job a little bit easier you could potentially put this rubber seal in some really hot water for a little while just to make it a bit softer that's quite a nice little trick we've got some workshop paper here just to clear up after ourselves We've got some gloves. We've got the rope that we use to thread through the actual rubber. We've got these two pick tools or hooks. Now, they're not super sharp and you don't want anything that's too sharp. Um, you could use a screwdriver, but if you've got anything similar to this in your workshop, that's what you need to use. Um, we've then got some glass cleaner. That is just literally to clean the glass whilst we've got all our handprints all over it. And then we've got some fairy liquid or some washing up liquid detergent just to make it a little bit slippery to sort of slide into the aperture a bit more easily. Now, I know these are a specialist tool, but they are just literally glass suckers and you can buy these uh, on eBay or, or Amazon for about £10 upwards. You know, you'd be paying about 20 to 30 quid for one that's probably worth having. Um, but again, it's a small price to pay to do this job yourself. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So that's everything we've got. We've also got a trestle here, but you could just use a regular table. Just remember when you're laying your glass on a table, you don't want any sort of raised points because otherwise the glass is going to bend down and crack. So just keep it on a flat surface. You could possibly lay a towel on a table and then put your screen on that, but we're going to be using this trestle. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is actually remove the windscreen wipers. I don't know if these have been off for a while, but obviously you just open them up and they should, they should wriggle off. There we go. So 
with your blade against the windscreen like this you just want to run it in so it's actually scoring against the frame of the windscreen like this and you'll see what I mean there look so it's uh, it's pretty easy to do obviously if you haven't got the suckers and you're going to be pushing it from the inside just again use your blade to score between the blade and the rubber because it will have sealed itself over time and you don't want to make the job any harder than it needs to be just give it a gentle tap to try and break that seal it's stuck pretty well hasn't it yes so it's all it's been there a while so just keep running the knife around and the corners are a bugger there we go mine's gone yeah There we go, just drop it down a bit. There we go. Okay, you got that? Yeah. We've got the A-pillar trims here. It's gonna be easier for us to get access uh, for the windscreen to take those off. So I'm gonna do that now. So as I said before, we're gonna be using a Britpart heated windscreen. So it's got the elements um, at the top and the bottom, and then it's obviously got the wires inside the glass. Um, I had a quick look and to be fair, I, I could barely notice the uh, the actual sort of elements in the glass, but I, I guess when it's actually on the screen uh, in front of you, it might be a bit more noticeable, but it does look nicely made. And you get these two little ribbons here, um, which obviously you connect to your wiring loom. And we're gonna be doing that as well to show you guys how to get it installed. And what we're also gonna do is try and piggyback off that um, some heated mirrors. Okay, so Kenny's just now taking these uh, stickers off and he's just said that obviously if you use a single edged blade, um a new one preferably to get the stickers off that's going to prevent you from scr so scratching the uh, you've got less chance of scratching the glass and this is really where if you've got a buddy i know it's not the most exciting job in the world but if once kenny's made a start i'm going to try and hold that in place although that seems to be gripping quite well doesn't it yeah because it's a better rubber yeah <laughs> yeah is that yeah is it that noticeable yeah yeah that is the tool you need isn't it so in these rubbers you have got here look a channel and that's what you need to feed your rope into so another tool that is worth having so we've got an applicator here off any sort of silicon uh, gun uh, that you might have lying about or an old one run your rope through it and all that means is you've got that harder piece there that you can actually push into this channel rather than trying to feed the rope in with your fingers uh, you can actually push it in and that'll be a lot easier so that's something we want to make up obviously just put a knot on the end feed it through reverse feed it through and you'll see how we use that in just a second but that is a good bit of kit halfway up the rubber okay give yourself a bit of a slack loop over loop it over tuck, tuck it, it in. in over the top across the other yep so they're both sitting together, I'll start again. And then you just carry on. Yeah. Tiny bit of washing up liquid. Any sort. Okay, so onto the paper, not onto your, directly onto the rubber. And then just, okay, well, nicely. Yep. Yeah. You don't want it over the aperture, you just want it sitting against it. Ah, uh, right, okay. Or the wires. Right, so the lip on the inside, so it mustn't go over that. Gotcha. Hang on, let me just do it right. So we've got this lip here. All you want so you're to make pulling sure. pulling it towards you from the outside as you're pulling yeah. that. You yeah. just want to make sure, first of all, don't go pushing it in because you don't need to push it in yet but make sure the rubber is coming the other side of the aperture yeah
So as you're pulling the rope out, you're just pushing it down with your fingers, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And don't f forget always that I think it will just flop in. Yeah. Wow. So this one's good. This one's good. We're going to get this one in now, and then we're going to get that one in. Well, guys, um, that is the job done. So as you can see here, we've got a little gap between the rubber and the hinge, just as it should be. This is nice and flat all the way around. Now we did struggle ever so slightly with this bottom corner here. Uh, top corner went in just fine, no problem at all. And the bottom corner just sat a little bit proud. Um, but you know, you can feel with a bit of warmth, um, there's a little lump here, but I reckon after it's settled down a bit and on a warm day, I'm gonna work my thumb into that a little bit more and see if I can get it pushed a little bit flatter. But it has sealed against the body, against the frame there. Well, we were successful in getting that windscreen in without cracking the glass. I'm really pleased. It looks great. It makes such a difference having a new seal on there. And I'm hoping that this has given you a little bit of confidence to take this job on yourself. Because if you like doing your own work on your own Land Rover, then fitting a replacement windscreen and a seal is definitely a job you could take on board. Um, all I would say is to make it more rewarding and more chance of success, invest in one of those genuine rubber seals because um, it makes the job a hundred times easier and it just looks a hundred times better. Now, I know everybody's got a budget and that at the end of the day is why companies like LR Parts do the cheaper option. And if you've got a little bit more time on your hands and you're a bit more patient and you're a bit more confident with what you're doing, um, you could give it a go with one of those cheaper rubber seals. But just bear in mind, it is slightly more hard work uh, than using the genuine one. And that's really what I wanted to try and get across in this video. Thanks very much to Kenny for coming along and helping us do this. Uh, the next job we're gonna do, obviously in a few episode probably in about a week's time is go ahead and get this wired up and we'll try and do that alongside doing the mirrors at the same time so hope you've enjoyed this episode thanks for sticking with us if you have enjoyed it please do give me a thumbs up and it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, at the end of the day that is it for now we've got loads more content coming in the next few days but from me that's it and i will catch you on the next one